In today's video, I survived 100 days in ancient Egypt. This world is covered in sand, new animals, hostile mobs, and even ancient ruins. Will I be able to survive for 100 days? Let's find out. But before we do, I just want to thank everybody for the overwhelming support on the videos recently. I honestly can't put into words my appreciation to you guys. So if you do want to help a guy like me out on the push to 200,000 subscribers, please just check down below that you are subscribed. I have some huge videos in the works coming over the next few weeks, so just get ready, we're only just getting started. Also, I want to give a huge thanks to MC Pro Hosting for sponsoring this video. Over the past almost two years, I've worked super close with these guys and some of the worlds that you guys have made over that time have been amazing. So if you ever need a server to play online with your friends, head to the link down below and you can even claim a free server for one week using my code. And without much further ado, let's dive into today's video. So there I was, in an endless desert in ancient Egypt. Straight away, I found a barbarian in the wild, so I punched him and ran away. As I was running, I saw camels in the distance. They looked so cool. But then I was distracted by an ancient ruin. I checked this place out and got some free loot, which included a limestone axe. So I started chopping some wood. In the process, I was attacked by a barbarian and some scarab beetles. So I ran to a distant dead oasis and started grabbing some wood from this place instead. There's clearly a massive drought in this desert, so finding water is going to be hard. Then, after chopping some wood, I came across my first main structure, a desert pyramid. These places are filled with hostile mobs and traps. So before I take this on, I'll be needing some more armor and weapons. I decided to grab some limestone and then headed towards another ruin. This one was much less barbarian infested, so I was able to swoop through this entire thing without much trouble grabbing some really helpful resources. Until these guys showed up. Luckily, I had looted some weapons at this point, so I was able to defend myself. And as I continued to loot through the night, I finally had enough string to craft some wool and make a bed. The adventure continued, searching for a place to live. I came across some water with a huge tower in the middle guarded by some assassins. So I took care of them and then checked this place out. But the loot in here was not too good, so the adventure once again continued. After a little while of running, I came across another large ruin, so slowly made my way through and stole all of the Egyptians' loot. I was able to get myself a full desert armor set, and it came at the perfect time because as I got an insanely rare chest piece, two more barbarians started attacking me. But thankfully, I was strong enough to defend myself, and by day two, I was already suited and booted and ready to continue to explore. In this ruin, I found a pyramid treasure map, which I decided to follow. On the way towards it, I stumbled across an ancient village, and since it was nighttime, I decided to sleep here and check it out in the morning. When I woke up, from a distance, it seemed to have a farm, which is something I'm in desperate need of because I have no food, and there aren't exactly many cows and sheep wandering around in the desert, unfortunately. So with that information, I decided to start setting up a house right here. I used up all of my limestone and had to go mining for more. And in the process, I came across a cave, which I was able to get some new ores from. And I also got the chance to explore a stone dungeon, which had a very unhappy stone guard inside that didn't want me there. On day 6, I resurfaced with a load of limestone to finish off the outline of this house. But as I came up to the surface again after grabbing some more, a sandstone rolled through the area. So I had to finish the roof quickly to save myself from sand building up inside of the house. Once the sandstorm had blown over, I decided to set off on the search for some food. I found some quail, but these things were way too quick for me to catch. So I had to settle for the next best option, scarab beetles from inside of trees. These are just insects. When I returned home, I had some unwelcome visitors, so I sorted them out and then decided to go over to their houses over at the village. I was super scared of dying at this place, but I still explored the farm because I was desperate for food. But this wasn't wheat, it was Emma. And as I was farming it, they caught me stealing from there and tried to kill me, so I just made a run for it with what I had. 
I tried crafting up some bread, but it didn't work. So after doing some research, installing the Just Enough Items mod, and cooking some limestone, I was able to make a quern, which is a device that spins the emmer into a form of flour, and then I can add water to it to make dough, and then cook that into bread. This does seem a little bit overcomplicated for bread, but I guess we're in ancient times. We've got to do it how they did it. So the next day, I set off again into the dunes on the search for some water. I ran past so many ruins, and in the distance, I could see a dead oasis. I saw trees and assumed some water would be over here. But as usual, I was wrong. This place was a dead oasis for a reason. So after walking around because I had no hunger, I finally found a regular oasis, which had so much water. I was so happy to see this stuff because I would finally be able to make some bread and not have to walk slowly everywhere. Another sandstorm blew over as I was adding water to my flour. And then when I returned home on day 10, I spun a bunch more emma to get flour. I found a body of water at that local village that I would be able to use for my food for now. And whilst I was here, I decided to properly check this place out, since it didn't actually seem too threatening. It was so much bigger than I was expecting, with so much loot. Unfortunately, it was either all eroded or dusty because of its age, but nonetheless, I still stole it all and then headed home to sleep on day 13. Today, I started gathering some more limestone. This was supposed to be used for my roof on the same day, but it seems I got curious and headed over towards the pyramids in the attempt to get inside. But no matter how many times I tried mining into this place, I couldn't get in. So I headed back home to research the mod a little bit more and try and find a way to get into this place. I found a video explaining how to enter, but the door just wasn't there like it said. So I just gave up and headed to another pyramid I had seen on my water search. Night quickly fell and as I entered this place, tons of mummies started coming out at me. So I decided to run back home and sleep off the night before going back, which was a great idea. When I returned, it was awfully dark in here, so I relit all of the torches and made my way through all of the thousand year old loot. This place had a basement and as I went to check it out, I found out it was booby trapped. And not only was it trapped, this thing was a maze, which I had no idea of the layout of and no idea what was at the end. So being super cautious, I tried to avoid as many traps as possible and make my way through. Honestly, this thing took so long, but finally it opened up to a hallway. This place had more traps, more rooms, and even Pharaoh's coffins. Whilst I did some research, I found out I'm able to respawn this Pharaoh, but they are extremely strong and have so much health, so I definitely won't be doing that now. The further I explored, the more rooms I found, and the more loot I gathered. This place was so much bigger than I expected from above. So after spending a few days down here, I decided it was time to try and make my way out of the maze and back to the surface. This took way too long, but eventually I did find my way out. And as I went home, all of the mummies from the pyramid followed me. But when I finally got home safely from the pyramid, I looked through all of my loot. Look how cool my armor is now. And along with this armor, I found a bunch of dirty riches, a saddle, camel armor, and so much more. So before I went to clean off all of my riches in the water, I went over and tamed a camel. Look at this thing. I rode him all the way to the watering hole and then started to clean off all of my riches. I'm not sure what I can do with the rings, the necklaces, and all of the other stuff, but I was able to trade my coins with a worker for some bread, which was just what I needed since I was starting to go low. And whilst I was here, I stole some of their fertile dirt, since I don't have any, and I want to settle my own farm at one point so that I don't have to keep traveling here every time I need food. And instead of waiting to make that farm, I got right to it. I needed wood for fences around the farm, as well as some seeds from other villages to plant down in my farm. This resulted in a several day journey all around the visible distance. And along the way, I had to tackle lots of barbarians, sandstorms, and so much more. But by day 23, I was able to return with a bunch of seeds and loads of wood. And now all I needed was the fertile dirt. So I set off to steal some. And when I got back home, I had more than enough. So then the farm was almost done. All I needed was some water from the local village. And once that was down, I had my own fully functional Emma farm. Now I'll have more bread than I'll ever need. And now that this place was starting to look a little bit more like somebody actually lived here, I decided it was time to put a roof on my house since I was still just living in a dirty shack. 
I put a pattern in the walls and then added the roof. And by day 29, this thing was done and it looked phenomenal in my opinion. Considering the resources I had, this thing turned out great. So then when it hit day 30, I realized I still hadn't gone mining properly for resources on this entire journey. So I set off down to try and locate some coal, iron, and most importantly, diamonds. After mining for several days, yes, days, I finally came across my first diamond. Only one. Since this is a very different dimension to the overworld, I have a feeling diamonds are a little bit rarer than usual in here. And since this isn't the overworld, there is absolutely no stone anywhere, so I grabbed some lava so that I can make a cobblestone generator up top to get some cobble if needed later on. Oh yeah, and I found another diamond. But I've done enough 100 days videos now to know that the mining parts are very boring, so I'll just skip to the fact that on day 37 I mined straight up to the surface with everything I had and came out right at my farm. I was so shocked of the luck that I had to pop up right here just by chance. After sleeping, I got right to that cobble generator. I mined a total of 16 blocks before barbarians started trying to kill me. I took this as a signal to start working on a wall around my house to keep these guys out. And for that, I needed a bunch of limestone so that I could actually start making it and it was big enough to keep them out. So I spent a while mining away down below at some limestone and then resurfaced to start working on it. As soon as I left my house, I had to deal with more of these barbarians. And then I started lining out where the wall was going to be, which was of course not done without being interrupted by a bunch more of these guys. And I had to deal with a sandstorm again on day 40, which made it so much harder to see the barbarians coming from the fog. And that sandstorm hung around for three days. But finally, after defending my land from hundreds of barbarians, it was finally done. I was secure at last. I had gone through a lot of food during this wall building, so I had to spin some more wheat the next day for bread. And then I started working on an expansion for the farm. In the process, I began to realize that the fertile soil did actually spread in a radius, so I only placed a few bits around and watched it start growing. Whilst I waited for the dirt to spread, I went over to rescue my camel that I accidentally left at the village earlier in this world. Thankfully, he was still there, so I took him back home and started working on a house to protect him from the sandstorms that keep blowing through. Oh, and I decided to name him Cameron the Camel. Say hello to him in the comments. Day 50. Yep, more mining. I needed more diamonds, so I went on another long mining journey and came up after 4 days with 20 diamonds. One step closer to full diamond armor. When I got home, I made a diamond pickaxe and went to grab some obsidian from the caves for an enchantment table. And after I did that, I went back over to the village to try and find some bookshelves. There was none here, but I did find some papyrus, which is a sugarcane replacement for the desert dimension. So with this, I spent the next few days gathering up a load of it for scrolls that I could make into bookshelves. Once again, while waiting for this thing to grow, I decided to start working on a new build, the enchanting outhouse. This would be entirely for all of my enchanting stuff. It took me a few days to gather all of the resources for this, but by day 60, it was complete with all of the bookshelves inside as well. And now I was able to start enchanting. Unfortunately, I only got efficiency 4 on my diamond pickaxe, so I enchanted a couple of iron pickaxes and luckily was able to get fortune 3. So with this, I'm definitely going mining again to try and get some more diamonds. And that's exactly what I did. Once again, I don't want to bore you guys with a mining montage, so I'll just say that on day 65, I returned home with 30 diamonds. And along with those diamonds, I gathered some limestone gravel, which I added to the quern and spun for some flint so that I could get some arrows. I'll need these for my next mission. Because earlier in this world, I was lucky enough to get a chest of atom from an ancient ruin. But since then, I haven't gained any more pieces, and I really want to complete my armor set before the end of this adventure. So I set off to explore some ancient ruins in this world. They didn't come easy, because every ruin that I entered came along with a bunch of barbarians that wanted to kill me. But either way, me and Cameron continued to explore from one to another, stealing the ancient loot. On day 69, I found this ancient village pyramid ruin hybrid which had a desert wolf that clearly wasn't happy about me being here. Whoa, 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 leave me alone. What the hell? What even is this? Why is this wolf dusty? Leave me alone! But once he was taken care of, I went inside of this place and found some carpet to put on Cameron. I think he really suits red. I also really liked how this village was because it was carved inside of a mountain. I thought it was so cool. And after that, then it was straight back to searching through ruins to try and find some atom armor. 
I found a pyramid and wanted to go inside to try and find some, but the amount of mobs in there was insane, so I just avoided it. And after running around for a little bit longer and not finding anything, I decided to head home. When I got home on day 73, I set some water around some fertilized grass to allow it to spread, and then started working on a storage house for the loot that I had gained up to now over the last 74 days. This didn't take too long, and it turned out to be a little bit smaller than I would have wanted, but it fit everything inside that I needed, so there isn't much I can complain about. I organized all of my goods and then with all of the new storage, I set back off in the search for more ruins to gather some more loot from. I only found one new ruin on the whole of day 77, so I decided to head home after a sandstorm rolled around and then started on a new task. Of course, there are lots of pyramids inside of this world, but you can't break or customize them until you've defeated the pharaoh boss that has to be respawned from inside. So I wanted to build my own larger pyramid that I could put an atom portal inside of so that I can enter back into the overworld. For this, I was going to need a lot of limestone. So I combined two pickaxes together to get an efficiency 5 silk touch pickaxe, which would be perfect for gathering limestone. And then after doing this for almost a whole day, I left the comfort of my walls and started clearing out the area for my own pyramid. I forgot how helpful those walls are because, oh my god, so many barbarians started attacking me whilst I was building this which made the process take so much longer. But after clearing out all of the visible spawners in the area, I started building as quick as possible, and I was able to make some great progress on this thing. I kept running out of limestone since I underestimated the amount that I would need for this, but finally on day 83 the exterior was done and I was able to start making the portal outline inside. To activate the portal I need a scarab, which luckily is quite cheap to make. And then all I had to do was drop it into the water and then the portal was created. It was time to go back to the overworld. When I went through, I spawned in a mountain biome and straight away I gathered some wood. I could see the start of a shipwreck in the ocean nearby that I will definitely be going to loot at some point. And then I killed some pigs before heading back home to sleep off the night. With days ticking away, I really wanted to finish my mission of my full armor set, so once again I set off to explore some ruins. I got super lucky with it this time, and on day 87 I found some atom boots inside of one of the crates. These give a 20% boost when running, so it's super helpful to explore this desert with these on. And now I have two out of the four armor pieces complete. It also made it so much easier to travel home during the sandstorm of day 88 and 89 so that I could get back and start preparing for the pharaoh battle. I watched a mod recap whilst I was searching for ruins and I found out that you can get atom armor from killing a pharaoh. It's a 25% chance of each individual piece, so I entered the pyramid in hopes of killing the pharaoh and receiving a set of atom leggings or an atom helmet. As expected, this place was filled with mummies, so I had to deal with all of those before I started making my way through the maze to get to the tomb. As soon as I entered the maze, I remembered I had no shield, which was an awful idea when going to take on one of the hardest bosses in this mod pack. So I went home, made a shield, and then headed back to take on the pharaoh. Like last time, it took me a while to get through the maze and down to the tomb. And after doing some exploring and disabling some traps, I found the sarcophagus of the pharaoh. So I started the respawning technique, and there he was, the pharaoh, Thoth Chanter. I started hitting him, but no damage was being done. It was then that I realized he harvested my health for himself every single time he hit me. So I decided to put my shield to good use and started blocking his hits and getting some damage done. As no surprise, my shield took a beating and broke super quickly, so I had to make a run for it. 
I tried looting some of the rooms in the possibility of finding a shield in the chest, but instead I found a totem of undying, which I had no clue even spawned in these worlds. So this was a huge shock. But even this won't help me take on the Pharaoh because I need to be able to block his hits to do damage. So I had to head back up through the maze to get a shield to help me to take on this Pharaoh. I made three shields and then returned. These should help me take him down for good. I went back in and started dealing some huge damage. And before I knew it, the Pharaoh had been taken down. And to complete my luck, he dropped Atom Trousers, which means I only have one piece missing before I complete the entire armor set, and that is the helmet. And also to my delight, after taking down this boss, the pyramid was now able to be broken, so I was able to just mine my way out so I didn't have to take that trap-infested maze back up. And after the success of that pharaoh, and after dropping off all of the loot, I set off to find some new pyramids to take on and respawn another pharaoh. This armor challenge will be hard, but I'm determined to get this armor set finished. I found a previously explored pyramid on day 92, but I hadn't respawned the pharaoh at this place, so I explored back through the maze and made it down to the tomb and resurrected this guy. Unfortunately, after a long and tedious battle, I was rewarded with a bow instead of an armor piece, which was not what I needed or wanted from this guy. So once again, I set off to find another pyramid. Once inside, I respawned him and the battle commenced. Pharaoh Atacron was ready to fight. After another long battle, going through many shields, he was down, and I was rewarded with a necklace. Once again, not what I wanted from this guy. So with time slowly running out, I took to one of the pyramid and tried to start a new fight. This pharaoh was by far the hardest, but again, I didn't get the armor piece that I needed. So with very little patience, I went to my final pyramid and did it one last time. This was my last shot. After a dangerous bout and a close call with death, I was rewarded with a wrath. This was not what I wanted yet again, and it seemed almost impossible to get the armor mission completed with the days remaining. So after many failed attempts, and still with the ambition of actually defeating the Ender Dragon in this world, I just made a shrine for the sarcophagus of these guys, and then leapt through my portal to head to the overworld so that I could start preparing for the Ender Dragon. That boat that I said I would loot earlier, it was now time to loot it, and whilst I was there, I found a treasure map. I followed it and was able to locate the goods after a little bit of excavation, but unluckily it wasn't anything good. And as I was swimming home, it hit me that I have to basically speedrun the game at this point with such little time and still with the goal of killing the Ender Dragon, I had to be quick. So I gathered up some obsidian, made a portal and headed into the nether. I knew I had to find a piglin right away and start trading for ender pearls. And after a stack and a half of gold, I left this guy with 14 ender pearls. So now it was all about finding a fortress, which luckily came quickly and I was able to start killing some blazes and gathering some rods. After killing a few, I left with 16 blaze powder, which was more than enough. So I made myself a portal after trading for some obsidian with a piglin, and then made it back to the overworld. Now it was time to hunt down the stronghold. On the journey, three of my ender eyes broke, but luckily I was prepared and got extra before leaving the nether, so this wasn't a problem. And after traveling for several thousand blocks, the eye finally changed direction, and I knew that the portal was here somewhere. I dug down, and there it was. The Stronghold. I hate how hard it is to find the portal in these places, but eventually I did find it, and I was able to add my eyes in. This was it. 99 days in an ancient Egypt desert. Now it was time for the end. Straight away, I started taking down all of the towers, and this modded bow made it so easy to do that, since the arrows barely even dipped.
Eventually she descended and I was able to deal a huge amount of damage to her. And then all it needed was a few more bow shots and she was down. Ninety-nine days into the adventure in ancient Egypt and the Ender Dragon was complete. And with 69 levels of XP, I picked up the Dragon Egg and headed home. Surprisingly, I missed this place. I put the Dragon Egg on display above the shrine and then watched the sunset fall behind the dunes. And then, that was it. I officially survived 100 days in ancient Egypt. This mod pack was so much fun to try out, explore, learn, and play on, so if you want to give it a try yourself, the mod pack will be linked down below. And if you want to see more 100 days videos, subscribe to this channel. I'm currently working on 200 days on a tribal island at the moment, which you guys absolutely loved the first part of, so get ready for that. But for now, that's been it for 100 days in ancient Egypt.